I certainly think things would have been different if they'd continued with uh, Thunderbirds. Well, character, I, I probably... Um, it was probably the hood. It's a, a close call between the hood and Lady Penelope. I mean, I, like, the, the hood was so... He was uh, very much a secondary character when he was cast, but he emerged as the uh, as the villain of the piece, and he became quite important, difficult to merchandise. But he was a wonderful sounding board for the uh, and a foil for the rest of the uh, the rest of the cast. Um, I think Lady Penelope and Parker, and, uh, and I'm sure Jerry told you that Parker was based on the barman at the uh, the pub in Kidcookham. Um, Parker, I think, was great because he was a real, he was a real person. He, <laughs> uh, I, I, I have a g tremendous affection for them all, but uh, the one I recall today, I say that I like the hood, and uh, and I like the relationship between uh, from Lady Penelope and Parker. Those are the two I think that I would highlight. People were taking note of us because we, we with each. Successive series, we had Supercar, we had Fireball XL5, we had Stingray, and then Thunderbird. We, we were on the escalator, and um, we could uh, we could produce magic. So everybody applauded Thunderbirds. Uh, they loved it, and I think that was probably the peak of our creativity and success. Certainly for me, I think that was absolutely marvelous, and uh, uh, it was known around the world. And Japan was. Uh, it's still a major force in Japan, the Thunderbirds. There are a lot of devotees and they keep playing it and playing it and playing it. Fathers would take their children, I mean, whichever way around, it was rather like fathers playing with the train set. It was, it was a must in families. They had to go and watch Thunderbirds because this was almost the highlight of the week for them. It sounds strange to say for a show of that nature, but it was really a very important piece of television. and. Uh, I think it was uh, different. What's the, there's nothing quite comparable um, in today's terms because there is so much there. There's nothing that stands out. I mean, Thunderbird was head and shoulders above anything else in its field, and it was a true family show. And you could, your grandmother could watch it, your three-year-old could watch it. Nobody could be offended, but everybody could be entertained. That's my view. We fully expected it to go on, and I believe it should have gone. Uh, but it was driven by, you know, commercial considerations. Uh, the intention was that we would get on the network in um, in the States, and I believe NBC, in fact, I know the NBC made a significant offer for it. And we'd been on the previous um, uh, network deal we had was with uh, Firewall XL5. That was our, we, we got on the network with NBC with that. So we had a precedent for it, but it ended up going on syndication, and on syndication, the money is more slow it comes in more slowly um, and it was decided to produce yet another series well it's incredibly difficult to create by uh, by command you know I think creativity is inspirational and if you are doing it to the calendar on the clock it's it's not always easy but that's what we were called about to do and Jerry came up with the idea of uh, Captain Scholars I, I think uh, at the time we probably didn't realise, but there's a, you know, there's a turning point in any piece of history, and um, without being dramatic about it, but I think supermarination is part of history. Um, I think that was probably a turning point. I certainly think things would have been different if they'd continued with uh, Thunderbirds. I think uh, even if they'd rested it and come back uh, the following season, I think it could have been developed and built. I mean, there are talks going on today about making a, a, a movie of Thunderbird. So, if it's good enough for today, I think he would have been good enough for a, a further series uh, in those days. It had the legs. It had the uh, the basic concept. I think was right for for continuing. It's, so yes, I think he was significant and probably more so than we realised. But we still had the drive and enthusiasm to go on with Captain Scrolls and the Mistrons and. Uh, the new style characters, which uh, at the time we all believed, you know, was right. But again, in retrospect, I think uh, 
the characters should have evolved perhaps not quite so dramatically. I, we changed from caricatures to humanoid characters, which um, uh, was probably uh, a quantum leap, which it should have been, if it was going that direction, it should have been phased in. It should have been it, evolution rather than rev revolution, that's my feeling. But uh, again, at the time it was felt to be right, and Captain Stuck, the scholar, was received with great enthusiasm and acclaim. But uh, it was more, it was moving the program slightly to a slightly older age group um, and probably changed the flavor of, of, light, of the licensing and the merchandise a little. Um, but the times in the 60s, in the 60s, we believed that everything was possible. And notwithstanding the, uh, the difficulties of raising the money and, and so forth, but we would literally um, we can break the hostel, not literally break the hostel, but we would make things happen. Uh, marvellous time. And it was a, there were five quite different people, which I think is good, you know, because you have different philosophies, different cultures, different language, all coming together. And I think the series is, is, was a, a product of, of those the different minds. Um, it was... It was magic. I mean, Thunderbirds, if you mentioned Thunderbirds, it would open any door. It didn't matter where you went. You could, you could say, well, I'm from the Thunderbird team. And they said, well, do come in. And it, so it was the password, the byword of the day. And uh, it's, it's, it's not too bad today, actually, because still you see it. So.